Hey creeps, today we are reviewing Winchester the movie. Why? Because Sarah Winchester and the Winchester Mystery House are one of my favorite things in history since I was a kid. No joke. This movie was so much fun. It was a blast. But there are some things that are quite a stretch from the truth. So today we're going to break down the facts and myths of Winchester the movie. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Your anger will never defeat us. Fact number one, Sarah Winchester was very much a real person and she was a freaking awesome person. She is the widow of William Winchester who owned the Winchester Repeating Arms Company who created those very, very pretty rifles. <laughs> I actually like, I'm not a big gun fan, but I do like a Winchester. And she did have a daughter named Annie that did die in infancy. Her husband also did die in tuberculosis. And yeah, she fled west and started building this very intense house. Now, I'm not gonna say this is completely wrong, but the myth is Sarah Winchester, totally distraught from the death of her husband and her daughter, sought the help and counsel of famed medium Adam Coons, who basically said, yo, there's a Winchester curse and you're going to die because your husband died because of the curse, your daughter died from the curse, and you need to move out west and you got to build a house that confuses the spirits and appeases the spirits because they're going to kill you, <laughs> they're going to get you. So she went out. However, there's no documented proof that Sarah Winchester ever saw Adam Coons. So that's a bummer. Absolutely wrong fact. Sarah Winchester never had any visitors. There was a rumor that Teddy Roosevelt showed up at her doorstep and rang the doorbell and nobody ever came. But outside of that, she never entertained anybody. So this fabricated tale of the 49% owners of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company that wanted her dismembered, essentially, from the committee, from the company, didn't want her to own it anymore. Hiring the psychiatrist named Eric Price, played by Jason Clark. Winchester is the majority shareholder of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. You want to take it away from her? We're worried about her sanity, Dr. Price. Um, never absolutely did not happen. There was never a psychiatrist that went to do an evaluation on Sarah Winchester, but it makes for a very fun film, I guess. <laughs> Fact and myth. Actually, Sarah Winchester did have a niece named Marion. She was nicknamed Daisy. Uh, I want to believe it's a Gatsby reference, but that was before the time, so it couldn't have been. But in the film, uh, Marion is staying with Sarah, who has taken her and her son Henry in after her alcoholic husband died and was very traumatic and apparently a horrible human being, and her son Henry saw the whole thing. This is murky. Because yes, Sarah Winchester did have a niece named Marion. And yes, she did live with her. However, she was not married yet. And she certainly did not have a son named Henry. And she left before 1906 when the movie takes place to go marry her very much alive husband. And then they adopted a daughter. So even though I love the whole story of her son getting possessed by this evil spirit, putting this bag on his head, almost dying, being super creepy with the cloudy eyes, definitely, definitely not true. Another fact and myth, kind of. They show the bell ringing at midnight. And this is a big source of confusion for Eric's, the Eric character, the psychiatrist. Uh, basically, the idea, the folklore is that Sarah Winchester would ring the bell at midnight to kind of let the spirits know, like, hey, meet me in the seance room. We're going to drop some floor plans. And then she'd ring it again at two in the morning to basically say, go to bed, leave. Now there are some weird uh, things here. Uh, number one, there's actually no proof that Sarah Winchester actually conducted seances every night in the seance room. That's incredibly disappointing to me because I love the idea of her really truthfully having had built this house to either confuse the spirits or to appease the spirits or a combination of both. I feel their presence in the air. In the walls. It has found us. But there is no evidence saying that is what this room was used for. But in the film, she definitely goes to the seance room. And in the film, it's because she is trying to reconstruct the rooms in which these angry spirits 
have died in in order to lock them in with a board with 13 nails in it, keep them there so they could eventually possibly move on. Mrs. Winchester, why all in construction? The spirit killed by the rifle. We lock them away. 13 nails seals them in. I will do whatever it takes to protect my family. Now again, another myth. There is no evidence or proof that the Winchester Mystery House was ever a ghost prison. There's no pictures nor evidence to support the fact that they would board up doors with 13 nails in it. Fact, the number 13 was incredibly important to Sarah. They talk about it a lot in the film. There's even a conversation between Helen Mirren and Jason Clark about 13 being a divine number. Now, there is an entirely non-spiritual paranormal theory to Sarah Winchester's life that this movie does not touch on at all because they are really coming at it from the spirit, the house that spirit built angle. But there is a lot of evidence that proves that she was not a spiritualist. She was not, didn't believe there was any hauntings at all in her home. In fact, her nurse and companion in life, in real life, said she had no spiritual leanings whatsoever. She, in fact, grew up around a lot of Freemasons and people that believed in the Baconian theories. So numbers and geometry and the idea of creating a house that is a labyrinth in order to reach different degrees of knowledge actually makes a lot of sense for this house. And if you're interested in more of that, Google the truth about Sarah Winchester. I'm not even kidding you. Google it, your mind's gonna be blown. <laughs> Fact, there is stairs to nowhere in the house. However, it's not in the center of the house and above it is not a room full of Winchester rifles that were built to uh, trap and appease and kill uh, a vengeful spirit that is a Confederate soldier that is can be killed by a bullet that was used to kill a psychiatrist. Whew, not true. <laughs> Fact, that crazy staircase, the switchbacks that you see does exist. They also call it the Goofy. It has exactly seven turns in it, which is kind of a nod again to Bac Baconian theory. So interesting. But those stairs were only two inches high because again, fact, Sarah Winchester did have arthritis and it was very hard for her to get around the house. And she was also kind of a freaking genius. What they don't talk about, people don't talk about Sarah Winchester, is she was incredibly brilliant. She studied at Yale. This woman was so well educated and she had this really intelligent mind. I mean, they have that intercom system you see in the house, in the movie, where it's a series of pipes that connect you to certain different rooms instead of like an electrical intercom um, existed. She even had this thing where a floor was slanted so water going from dishes would go and water the plants down below. There's skylights, there was, thir there was three elevators, two hydraulic, one electric. She created one of the first showers on the west coast and it had all of these different like heads on it because she was only 4'10 and she had a hunch because of her arthritis. She was a tiny little woman so she had tiny little doors ways and tiny little things because again nobody came and visited her fact there was an earthquake on april 18th 1906 was it caused by a vengeful spirit during an intense showdown in the house between sarah winchester and her psychiatrist um i don't think so <laughs> uh but it did damage the house greatly there was a seven-story tower in the middle of the house you see it in the film and they had to tear it down after the earthquake. And actually, Sarah Winchester left the house for a while after that happened. She went and lived on our houseboat because she was totally freaked out by the earthquake because yeah, she kind of had this, you know, crazy visionary mind for architecture, but she wasn't an architect. And if your house totally crumbles around you, I would leave too. But she returned and she died in the house actually. Fact, Sarah Winchester did present her construction crew that worked 24 seven, 365 days a year, new plans every single day. So the idea that she was being visited by spirits or channeling them to draw up the amount of work that she did I mean, it almost makes sense because it's unheard of to have to constantly for 38 years be in constant construction and to have new ideas and the most bizarre ideas, it really does lend itself to the idea that she was hiding from something or trying to appease something or was just possibly tuning into a different level of creative energy that anybody else has ever seen. And what's kind of 
devastating is when she died in 1922, literally construction stopped. As in half hammered in nails just were left that way. Things were dropped, people stopped. The construction totally stopped. And in 1923, the Winchester was open for public tours. Now, it is a fact that the tour guides in the beginning were told to embellish the story. Uh, people, most of, most of the lore you hear about Sarah Winchester, the entire idea that it's a house built by spirits was completely something that was fabricated in the magazines. If you think about it, in the time, she's building this mega mansion in the middle of nowhere in these orchards and fields. And she has so much money. Like, it totally lent itself to rumors and gossip. So, we'll never really know what was happening in the Winchester Mystery House in 1906 and every time, like from 1884 essentially to 1922. But I will say this movie is one of the most fun horror films I have seen in a very, very long time because it's kind of just a traditional scary house movie. The gags with the mirrors and the doors and it's not super bloody which like there's a room for gore but this film just relies on old like house on a haunted hill tricks i loved it i enjoyed it even though they completely fabricated so much of the story i am so happy to finally see a movie made about winchester for people that don't know about sarah and her amazing life to know about it i think it's just a great fun Definitely go see it. Helen Mirren plays Sarah Winchester. When is it ever going to be a bad situation when Helen Mirren's playing anybody? So go see it. Let me know what you think and enjoy it. And I hope you get super, super spooked out. <laughs>